Welcome once again to Wednesday webinars at ESU8. Today I have with me Lisa Pospichel from Norfolk. Hello everybody. And my name is Corey Dahl and I'm the Instructional Technology Facilitator here at ESU8. And today we are talking about Google Classroom. So this is meant to be a beginning session to what is Google Classroom, how does it work, uh, it'll be a high flyover in about the next 30 minutes. So let's start today by getting you involved. And I'm going to pull in a poll. OK. And the question is, I've already used Google Classroom, yes or no? So if you could click in there and submit. And then in a moment here, I will show you the results. So this also helps us with a little bit of an idea of who we have in our audience. It's great seeing all the Norfolk people in here. And here are results. So most of our audience here has not used it. So I think that's good because yeah. that's basically how we were gearing this presentation. All right. Let's start by saying, what is Google Classroom? Um, let's just take a look at um, some of the things that it is and talk about a couple things that it maybe is not. Yeah. Lisa? I, th I think Google Classrooms is a real simple way to organize handouts and get things from your students. So hand in, hand out, kind of a simple learning management system, right? Way right. to communicate with them, announce things. Right. It provides an organizational structure if you're a Google Apps for Ed school, really. Yeah. And I, I really like uh, the saying that it takes a lot of the techie out of it. You know, it, it really makes it nice and simple. Last year, or, you know, even less than a, actually just this, this month, it has come out in August. Um, so prior to last month, people could make something like this work, but it didn't have the look and feel, and it was a little bit techie. Yeah. So this will make, uh, make it very easy for someone who isn't very techie to have a very organized system for uh, communicating and getting assignments turned in and turned out. And we'll talk about a lot of those things throughout the uh, webinar. I also think it's smart to get started now because I think they're going to keep improving this and add new things as the year goes. So right. get started now. OK, so to get started, your school has to be involved in the Google Apps for Education um, domain. Um, and you have to have a school that has signed up for that. And you pretty much know if, if your school is in that or not. And if you're not sure, ask someone. And if they say no, this might be a great time for your technology uh, people in your district to help you sign up. Yeah. And you might hear them call it GAF. I think, isn't that the acronym right. here? So right. if they say we're a GAF school, you're pretty much in there. But you cannot do it with a regular Google, Google right. account, right? And GAF is that G yeah. for Google and yeah. A for apps for education, for education. right? GAF. Yeah. Yeah. Often it's referred to as a gaffe. A gaffe. Right. <laughs> and so if, if you do get signed up, the website is right there. It's classroom.google.com. Um, but you do have to be part of that education apps domain for this to work. So general Joe public cannot do it. Also worth noting, since I'm talking about that, is I can't, if I'm not a part of Norfolk Public Schools domain, I cannot be a student or a teacher in their world. So it is protected. Yes, that's a good point, good point. And they'll tell you, if you go to classroom.google.com right now, if you're signed into your school account, it will say whether or not you're Google Apps for Education School. Right. OK. So once you are in your Google Apps for Ed school, you've signed up, and all the things that are turned on that need to be, right yes. when you go to classroom.google.com, you're going to see this, Lisa. And what, what's important yeah. to pick here? Yeah, and it's, you'll only see it once. But if you're a teacher, make sure you click on teacher. Uh, make sure students tap on or click on student. Very important. Right. So what happens if, because you can imagine, <laughs> right, you're from Norfolk, if you have a 1,000 some kids in the junior high. How many yeah. do you have in the junior high? Uh, 600. Right. Well, so yeah. 600 students. Someone may pick teacher when they're, in fact, a student. Yes. What can they do? Well, you'd have to go to your Google Apps for Education Administrator, and they will reset you. Right. Um, just let them know that you clicked on the wrong thing in classrooms. Right, so that's just something that someone, again, probably the person or the group of people who signed you up for the Google Apps for Ed have access to fixing that. Yes, right? yes they do. Okay, so just a general tip. When, yes. when you get students in there and yeah. yourself to 
you may not want to necessarily explore and say that you're a student because then you have to no, switch. Even if you're a teacher and you're going in with a classroom, you can do both, but make sure you tell them you're a teacher. Right, right. Because you can do both. So let's start this by touring what the teacher side of it is. So we're going to start by just touring the screen. We'll show you how to create a class, and we'll just move from there. That picture was, man? Okay. Right. So if, if, we're, if we're getting started here and we're signed into Google Apps for Ed, it is as simple, and we're not even watering this down, yeah, no. as clicking that plus. That plus. And, and they really have simplified what you see. So, you know, anything that's on the screen, uh, pay attention to it because that plus sign is where you can create a class as a teacher or join it. Now, if I was only a student, I would only see join. Right, right. So it depends on what your role is as far as uh, what, what it is that you're going to see. Right. And um, you only see this plus on the home screen for Google Classrooms. So if you're in one of your classes, you have to go back home to see that plus. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Next. So it's quite simple to get started. They don't overwhelm you with a lot of techie stuff. Talk about class names and sections, Lisa. And, and also, the one question I've heard is that if I'm a science teacher and mm -hmm. I teach eight, or not eight, let's say four sections, um, should I lump all of my students into one class or separate out in sections? You know what I'm saying? We yeah. talk about that. Yeah, and, and we, you know, discuss this too. But I would put them each as their own session, and this is why. If I want to see a, a class period, say section two of the same class I have four of, I want to just pull up those students. If I group them all in one, they're going to be alphabetized as far as assignments being turned in, and I won't be able to separate them or show them to the class. And there is a very easy tip that we're going to be giving you on how you can duplicate your assignments and your announcements so that you can get them in all your sections quickly. So because you have some teachers in Norfolk already starting on this, yeah. they figured out that they didn't want 125 <laughs> students All in, one. In, in one class. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's the same class, they mm -hmm. still want it separate. So call it, you know, like you said, or whatever, section one, section yeah. two, or period, or period one. one. Yeah. It's whatever yeah. makes sense to yeah. you. So before yeah. you make that mistake, just one for each period. One for each period. Yeah. Okay. And then once you type that in, it's as simple as create. So we've clicked mm -hmm. plus. And we're going to create a class. We've typed in a name, and now off we go. So this is what it comes up. So here's my example. I just typed in biology. Notice I put P1 in there for period one. Okay. So we're going to start by just touring this screen here. And when you sign up for yours, you'll get this option there. You'll see this little start tour. You see where that big red arrow is? I would suggest just clicking on that because it gives you a short, very short tour. And let's demonstrate what that looks like. You get a little window like this, and it talks about the classroom stream. So right in the middle of your page, you have uh, an actual little stream um, that, that uh, where your assignments and where your announcements come through. For that and, class. Yeah. And the, the word stream is familiar to those people who are Twitter users mm -hmm. because everything just flows through yeah. the stream. Chronologically and how you added it. Right, right. So we'll come back to some of this. Uh, the next part is uh, the classroom code, and that's down at the bottom here. Now, one thing to point out, I'm going to have Lisa talk about this, is the fact that sometimes, and if you've ever done this, it's hard to tell. If you look at my code there, it says 4 or 5 Z. Now, is that a lowercase zero or lowercase O? Is it a capital O? Is it a zero? So they give you an option to do what, Lisa? To reset it. And I've... I've done so far as resetting it 15 times until I get one that doesn't have confusing numbers or letters and one that's easy to type in. Especially on the iPads, I try to get it so that all the numbers are on one side and letters so the kids aren't switching back between the keyboards. So, but, Lisa, when yeah. you say you tried it 15 times, you just kept hitting the reset button. Reset, reset until I saw one I liked. Now, I use the examples of the zero and the O. Now, what was your example that you don't like either? The one and the L always get confused with students and and you know that's it you want to do this right away at the beginning so one of the first things you look at when you create a class is change that code because guess what you get to share this with students and if you change it mm -hmm. then you'll have to kind of start all over because look right? at mine I have uh, what appears to be a zero and is that a one is that an L what is that there and I, I put that green arrow over that so that that's a great tip so, so just continue to reset it if you're having problems with the sound, now I'm seeing in the chat, um, 
we are recording this, so uh, hopefully. Okay. And maybe try to plug into Ethernet. All right, so um, we'll move on. Um, the next part is the student. So we have the stream on the left-hand side there, the students in the middle, and this is still part of the tour. Okay, and, in, and within the students, yeah. um, you, can, you can do several things. And the, and the hint or the tip that they give you here is this, that you can add students here, and, they're all, and, and, they're, and, and there are all sorts of other things you, you can do. But um, um, we won't spend a lot of time on this right now. And later in the webinar, we're going to show you yeah. um, what uh, the student side looks like. And, and I really think it's best just to give the kids the code. Mm -hmm. it, it's just much easier. Keeps you from making mistakes and entering their wrong email address. Okay, the About section. Now, I love some of the tips Lisa has for this regarding the About section and, and what you might want to use it for and where you might want to put these things. So, Lisa, you want to talk a little bit about the about yeah, section? Yeah, you bet. The about, you know, this is where you can add a little bit more description, but what I really like, um, and then what I don't like about the stream, is that things get buried below. But you'll see at the bottom of the about, there's a place that you can add materials. This is where I'm, I would put all the things that I want the kids to have access during the entire semester or, or length of the class. And there's lots of different things that you can add in those materials, which are, you'll see some links here in a second. You can add attachments. So you can upload a file from your computer. Could be a PDF, which I probably recommend if you're, you're distributing things that way. You so can, one example of, a, of something that you might attach, let's say you have something like a PDF, and mm -hmm. that is your classroom syllabus. Sure, a rubric maybe now, that you use with your students. Now, why, again, would you put it here in the About section and not in the stream? So it doesn't get buried at the bottom. Because the stream, as you use this class throughout, and then the student wants to find the syllabus, and they can't. If you say all that stuff, mm -hmm. all of our meeting dates, all the important information is under the About. That's right. Right. Okay, so the first one is an attachment, straightforward. Yep. Next one is just a Google Doc. So a Google if you've, Drive. Yep, right. from Drive. If you've uh, uploaded it to Google Drive, that's a great place to attach it also. And then the next one is a video. So what if you have a, a video introducing your classroom and maybe some of the rules that you have if you've gone that far and created it? I'd put it in the About. And the last one, this was a really good tip from one of the teachers. They put their classroom web page link here. Right. So any link, uh, you, you can even use yes. this for any number of things, but mm -hmm. it's just a link um, to, to any web outside page. Web, yep. web page. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next section. Up in the upper left-hand side of your, of your classroom, you have the ability to, to change and, and, and make some changes to your settings. And let's talk about one big one there. And the big one is what? <laughs> Under settings. So I clicked on the top left hand with those three lines. And then I'm clicking on settings. And then what have I drawn an arrow to there? I'm going to send email notifications. Then the default is that it is checked. It is checked when you start. So what might happen to you, Lisa, if you're a teacher oh. with 150 kids? Every time someone hands in an assignment, you would get what? An email, and it would totally bombard my email inbox. So I would uncheck that, send email notifications. Right. So if, unless you enjoy many, <laughs> many emails, I would shut that off. Now, as a teacher, we're saying, well, maybe shut that off. What about, what's your recommendation, Lisa, for a student? I would probably leave that on because anytime you post an assignment or announcement, it will send them an email notification. So I would uh, tell your students to leave that on. Right. That's a good tip. Okay, next. This is a purple theme. Um, it looks like uh, there's some bubbles. sort of bubbles there. <laughs> uh, you can change. This is minor, but, you know, you might have a, some sort of coordination with uh, your classes and so on. So you do have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you just scroll through a gallery. I don't have a lot yet. No. But I expect, mm -hmm. just like uh, many of the things that Google does, that you'll have the ability at some point to put your own picture in there. Yeah. Um, this is the first. It's only about a month. Yeah. So. And it's one of those 
aesthetic things, but, you know, that would be one of the last. Right, ones. right, right. Okay, so uh, next, let's look at the stream a little closer. Now, within the stream, we have announcements and assignments. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about these one at a time, and, and they seem pretty straightforward, but you might want to use announcements in a certain way. Mm -hmm. and assignments in another way. Yeah. So let's start by looking at announcements. Okay? Yeah, announcements um, I would use for those things that you don't want to put a due date to. Right. So that you don't have kids that have these late flags on there. So if you want to just pass something out to them, you want to let them know there's a test coming up, those are the types of things that make an announcement. So things without due dates. Yes. Right. And you'll notice, just like in your About section, when I make an announcement, I can attach something to an announcement. It could be a flyer, perhaps, on something that's coming up. Um, again, it can be anything within my Google Drive. It could be a video, just an announcement. Okay? Now, off here to the side, this is what's nice. Go ahead and talk about this, Lisa. Now, this is this way I don't have to make the announcement for every section. Remember, we talked about making a classroom for every section. Make sure this is great because you can check on all the sections that it applies to, so you don't have to recreate it. Right. So if I have bio, biology period one, if I have biology period two, period three, and I know that assignment is going to go to everyone, I could just one time and send it to all those classes. You don't have to repeat those steps over and over again. Right, right. So that's that's key to know. And that's also, um, earlier we talked about making sections for everything. So yes. this is an easy way to distribute something. Okay, next. Now let's move to an assignment, and let's see how that's different from the announcements. And the biggest piece was what, Lisa? The putting a due date, and that's probably the thing I forget the most is adding that due date. And it, the default is for the day that you're the next day that, right. that you're making this assignment. Um, and and so just make sure that you change that. And also, we drew an arrow to this time. You mm -hmm. can actually put a time that it's due if you have a specific time. Okay. And then there, just like announcements, you have the ability within an assignment to give that assignment to each section that you wish. Right. There is one thing that I think I'm going to add to this section. When it comes to giving an assignment, and if you're attaching a document, especially in Google Drive, you'll have the option of whether or not to make it view, editable, or make a copy for each student. Mm -hmm. And um, that, to me, is, is really important. And depending on what platform your students are using, uh, you'll want to play around with that. Right. So test, test the waters a little bit before you get too deep. Um, let's, let's start. Let's, I'm going to throw in here another poll. Let's see if you remember. Okay. So I'll bring in a poll. We'll get, we'll get you involved again. Okay. I'll open my, open my poll. Okay. I have to be part of a Google Apps for Education domain to utilize the classroom. Your choices are what's Google? <laughs> True or false? And the results. Yes, you do have to be part of a Google domain, a Google Apps for Ed domain, or a GAF school to take part in this. Right, right. I see a great question from Heidi down here. It says, do these due dates connect to their calendar or send a message as it nears, I will tell you though when they go, I don't know that for sure, but I do know that when they go into classroom, it does give them, and when we look at the student view, it will give them a list of assignments that, um, in chronological order, that are coming up due. So they do get some sort of notification. I just don't know if it goes on their calendar. That's a great question. We'll have to figure that out. I'll well, look, to look at, that. at this, is, this being as new as it is, and it we're is. two weeks into school. <laughs> it is. It is. Right, right. Great question. All right. Lisa. See where it says essay and it says one done. And I don't see below that, but it will tell you how many students are left to complete it. So you can very quickly as a teacher take a look at what assignments, what students still need to complete. And when you click on the essay assignment, it's going to take you to another page. Okay. That is going to tell you the status and who's done and who is not done. You can also look at the assignments that have come in. You click on it. We'll open up that assignment if it's a Google Doc or an attachment. 
you can also return the assignment. So after you've graded it, you can return it. Or let's say that the student didn't do what he was asked. You can return that assignment and have them correct it. I think that's great. Absolutely. Yeah, you can also email, do some other things in there. So take a look at that one. Now, there was a tip um, that I wanted to have Lisa talk about. And the tip regards this. We had some questions right away. Um, you know as well as I, we're all teachers at some point where we, we get on a roll and we, we're really into our Google Class and we want to make all these assignments. Now, if we start posting in our stream all of the assignments, then the kids see them and, and then they're starting to do them. And those are, we've already had these questions. Yeah. So how, Lisa, since we can't time them yet mm -hmm. as far as when they go delay out it. or yeah. delay it, yeah. what, what's a good idea if you're that teacher who gets on a roll and they really want to get organized and, and get everything ready, how can we organize this Google Classroom right now so that when it is time to send those things out, I don't have to sit down and actually do it and think about where those assignments are? Right. And, and, you know, I credit the junior high teachers during this training. We kind of brainstormed. And, and the idea or the tip is to make a master class. So make a section that has no students in it whatsoever, that build all your announcements and your assignments as far ahead as you want. And as soon as you are ready, you can go ahead and check on those classes that you want to put them in. Yeah. And so I thought that was a great idea. So I think if, if, if I'm the science teacher and I have all my sections of biology, like I was yeah. saying earlier, I actually am going to make a class called master class or mm -hmm. whatever makes yeah. sense. And I put all everything in there. Yeah. And then just like here on the screen, just go back I, and, edit and, it. and I just send them out. So then mm -hmm. I, when I get on a roll, as mm -hmm. we all do, and then we get, you want to get ahead of the game. Yeah. And I think in the future, Google will make a delay of assignment, but I really like the master class idea. Right. So make a master class. Make a master class. Now the student view. Here we go. Here we go. Now we we're in ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Okay. So when students get here and they sign in, they are going to see all the classes that they've enrolled in. And to get to the class, they have to click on the name of the class in the colored area. And that folder, um, I wouldn't have them click on that very often. What that does is take them out to Google Drive to the folder where everything is. But you can really do almost everything within this home page. And this is called the home page. Right. Okay. The next page that students see. And on the, oh, it's not the next page. This is how they enroll. Okay. So just like you had the plus to create a class, okay, students have a plus to enroll themselves. So they're going to click on that plus, and it will say put an enrollment code. And then the code that you generated is what you will share with them. And they'll, they'll just put it right there. And this is what we referred to earlier, how we continue to reset it so it wasn't confusing. Yeah. Because yeah. if they don't type it in literally perfect, yeah. it will not join. It, they can't join it. OK. And then here is what the students see. Just, Almost exactly what you see, except for instead of students, they see the word classmates. So they'll see stream, classmates, and about, which your about should have all of those uh, different pieces that you uploaded, like your materials um, and links for the class page, any of those things. And then down below, they'll see, let's look at the stream. So if I have an assignment, you'll see here, it's late. Uh, but I have an attached Google Drive, plus I have a YouTube video which I think is really kind of cool. Okay. Anything else to add there? No. Yeah, let's go on. Okay. Now, I want to point out these three lines. And you're going to see this on your teacher side, too. This is how you get back to the home page, because that's the only place you're going to find that plus. Okay. But I do want to point out, somebody put the question about dates being due. On the student view, they see assignments. And what it will do is take them to an assignments page. Go ahead and click the next one. And we'll see what that looks like. So for students in each one of their classes, it will have what's coming up in chronological order. So I really like that it takes all of their classes together and put all the assignments on one page. Kind of cool. And it has to do and then what things are done up there at the top they can click on. Right. So up here, you have a to-do list mm -hmm. created for them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what the default is on and then what's done. Right. So it's kind of cool. And let's take a look, though, at how a student turns something in. Because we talked about this is a way for teachers to distribute stuff. Now let's look at how students can turn things in. So when the student's ready to turn it in, they're going to click on that assignment, and they're going to come to this page. 
and they're going to have the option to add things from Google Drive, a link, or upload a file. They can also create, you'll see down here, a new document, presentation, spreadsheet, or a drawing. And then once they've uploaded it, they can turn it in. Okay? And if it's something that you created for them to finish a copy, they can just click on Turn In, and it all lines up pretty well. I like it. It's cool. Once it's turned in, you'll get it, and it will say Done. So how, how do you, the teacher, know, then again, referring back to earlier, right. that, that someone's turned it in? And it's instantaneous. What's great, if you're looking at your screen, your stream, as students are turning in, it will go to two are done, four are left, and, and it will keep changing as students turn things in. Right, so it keeps a running tally mm -hmm. for you in your stream as the teacher. Right. Okay. Now this, this last page here, we want to talk about what, what we're looking at here. This yeah. is back to the teacher view, yeah. and it's talking about what it does for you in your Google Drive. Want to yeah. talk about this? Yeah, you know, and, and what happens here is that Google Classrooms is, is directly connected to your Google Drive, and some of you will see, as soon as you create a classroom, there's a new folder in your Google Drive, and that folder is going to always be called Classroom. So don't be shocked that that's there. It is automatically creating it. Don't move it. Don't delete things because it is being automatically populated. That's the, the one thing that you want to not try to over-organize yourself with that folder. And the, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll want to also note that every class you have, there will be a folder. And you can double-check the information in there. But you can go in and check students' assignments in there. Just don't move it or delete it. Okay. One last poll here. One last poll. Should I delete my classroom folder in my Google Drive? Yes, that's not a problem. No, leave it alone. Or what's a Google Drive? Good kind of car. And the results, yes. Leave they it heard, alone. They heard you. Leave, leave it, it alone. alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the end. Once again, I'm Corey Dahl, and this is Lisa Pospisil, and hopefully you have a, a taste of what this Google Apps for Ed Google Classroom gets you. If you need more help, please contact us. Um, ask around. Um, it has just come out just this August, so it is very new, yeah. and, and it will continue to get better, I have no doubt. Yeah. And, and the cost, did we talk about the cost? Oh, no, we didn't. It is, it is free. It is free. Do we have a minute per question? I see one coming through here. Yes. By Joy yes. Okay, we have one minute. Flubaru, can it grade it and go right into classrooms? The answer to that is no. Although you can add grades in there, if your school has a grading software like we do, Infinite Campus, just grade it in there. Don't worry about doing double duty and grading that. You'll want to uh, not worry about it. But Flubaru, it's not connected yet. Maybe in the future. You never know. Next Wednesday, uh, our webinar will be Google Favorites. We attended a Google Summit this summer, uh, myself and Jill Bates, and we also have another guest. We have Mickey from uh, Norfolk joining us to talk about some of the great things that we heard. So we'll give you, out of a couple days, some high flyovers again of the, the big tips that we took away from the Google Summit. Phew, that went fast. Yes, it did. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, guys.